First up is the hierarchy window. The hierarchy window allows us to view our open scenes. For example, we can see the sample scene here created by the project. We are able to access the game objects inside of the sample scene by clicking on the drop down arrow to the left. Here we can see we have a main camera game object. If I right click on this game object, I get a context menu. In here, I can do various things such as rename, duplicate, delete, and I can even create new game objects of many different types. If I create a game object, it is created as a child of where I initially right clicked. I can rename the game object and unparent it and reparent it as necessary. Next up is the scene window. The scene window allows us to edit our game objects in 2D and 3D space. We are able to position them, rotate them, and scale them. To select a game object, you can use left click or you can left click and drag to select many game objects. You can use the right click and the middle click to pan your camera around, and you can zoom in with your middle mouse wheel, or by holding down Alt, right click, and panning your mouse back and forth. If you press W, it will give you the movement gimbal where you can move along each axis or both. You can press E for the rotation tool, and you can press R for the scale tool. Next up is the project window. The project window is just like our file explorer here. We have my project, assets, and packages. In my assets folder, I have scenes, and in my scenes folder, I have a sample scene. Same thing down here. I have assets, packages, scenes, sample scene. The sample scene is what is currently open right now. Packages are defined by Unity, but assets are where we keep all of our data, such as our scripts, our audio, our animations, etc. We try to keep this data organized into folders. You can add folders by right-clicking, going to the very top, Create, and Folder. There are also a lot of other options in here for you to choose from, such as scripts. In our Scenes folder, I can barely read the text there, so one thing I do recommend is that you go to the bottom right here and drag this scroll bar all the way to the left for a list view. Next is the Inspector window. The Inspector window allows us to change the properties of anything we have selected. For example, in my project window, I have this red material. I can change this red material's color property from white to red. I can also select my cube game object in the hierarchy. I'm able to view all of the individual components that make up the behavior of this game object. I can click to expand and change the properties of these components individually. I can remove components by right-clicking and going to Remove Component, and I can add components by clicking on the Add Component button. I can also disable and enable my game objects using the checkbox in the top left. Last is the console window. The console window is very important because it tells us if something is wrong with our game. We can also use this console window to manually print three different types of messages to ourselves to tell us what our code is doing. For example, we have logs, warnings, and errors. We can show and hide these logs, warning, and errors using the buttons in the top right. I recommend you always keep errors visible and keep an eye out for them while you're playtesting. Sometimes you will be unable to playtest your game because of a compiler error. When this happens, you should first remember to clear your console and then you're left with what's causing the problem. It will tell you exactly what's wrong, and if you double click on the error, it will take you to it in your code editor.